Often I get questions about glues and their application to Luthery. There are so many choices available that it can become quite confusing. Some glues work better than others for certain steps of the building process. My goal here is to help educate you about the pros and cons of each type of glue available to us as luthiers and show some examples of where I would use certain glues. Modern glues are stronger and more reliable than ever. Let's start by talking about probably the most widely known and used glue, yellow glue. I use a brand called Tight Bond. There are several recipes available. The one best suited for luthery is Tight Bond Original. This glue could be used for the entire building process and often is by many builders and factories. The same company makes Tight Bond 2 and Tight Bond 3. These two versions of the glue have a slightly higher melt temperature and also a higher moisture resistance. This can be useful when laminating and bending bindings and purflings. However, one of the drawbacks is that you never want to join a lightly colored top or back with Tight Bond 2 as it can discolor the wood. Another version of Tight Bond, basically the same recipe as the original Tight Bond, is called Extend. It allows more open time, and this comes in handy when installing bindings or other steps that require more time. Like I said earlier, this glue can be used for every step in the guitar building process. Here are just a few examples. As you watch these examples, let me give you some more statistics about this glue. This glue is an aliphatic resin emulsion type glue. It has a shelf life of approximately 12 months, tightly closed at 70 degrees. The first digit of the code on the side of the bottle is the final digit of the year. This is followed by a letter indicating the month, A for January, B for February, etc. And I is skipped. Always make sure your glue is fresh. It has an open time of 5 minutes. This is usually enough time for all aspects of the building process. If you feel you need more time, you might consider the extend version, which gives you 15 minutes of open work time. It also dries quickly, thus requiring less clamping time. The minimum working temperature is 50 degrees, and you can clean it up when it's wet with a moist rag. After it dries, it must be scraped. A good substitute for yellow glue is the LMI Instrument Maker's Glue. This glue has become an industry standard and is perfect for all steps of instrument making where a wood-to-wood -wood bond is needed. This glue, available exclusively at LMI, is a polyvinyl glue and the only one on the market specifically formulated for instrument makers. Because this glue dries hard, it is said to provide a better sound transference medium than other glues. It sets up in 15 to 30 minutes, dries transparent, is water resistant, and softens with heat for repairs. The shelf life is 6 months to 1 year, 9 to 15 months if refrigerated. One way of telling if the glue is still good is to smell it. If it smells sweet, it's ready to use. If it smells sour, discard it or use it for other applications other than instrument building. Another plus to this glue is that it dries clear. Another type of glue very useful in guitar building is what's known as plastic cement or vinyl adhesive. This glue is used to bond plastic to wood and specifically in our case, plastic bindings to wood guitar bodies. These glues are made out of synthetic resins and organic solvents. They have harmful vapors and can be irritating to the skin and eyes. Therefore, it is necessary to take precautions when working with this product. If you are using plastic bindings on your guitar, then it is necessary to use this type of glue. One of the drawbacks is that the cure time is very long. Since the glue actually softens the binding material, you must wait usually at least 24 to 48 hours before scraping the bindings flush with the sides. Fortunately, LMI now has a plastic cement product that significantly reduces the wait time. It is pictured here in the glass jar. It has a fast tack, sets up quickly, and produces less fumes than similar products. You can even use it on oily exotics like Coco Bolo with good adhesion. Speaking of oily exotics, Epoxy is the glue of choice when working with woods like Coco Bolo or Teak that have a high oil content. Some builders wipe the oily wood with acetone to remove the oil before gluing and then use regular wood glue or LMI instrument maker's glue. However, 
all it would take is one joint failure to make you wish you had used a glue specifically formulated for oily woods. To use this glue, put one part resin and one part hardener in equal amounts in a container. Then mix the two together thoroughly. After mixing, let it sit for a few minutes and then apply it to the pieces you want to glue together. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way, so mix in small amounts and apply it sparingly to the pieces you want to glue together. This glue can be used everywhere you need to glue oily woods together or where you need to glue things like kerfing and end blocks to oily woods. It will also give you the peace of mind knowing that the joint won't fail due to the oil content in the wood. Some advantages of this epoxy are the one to one mix ratio by volume is very forgiving. It has a two hour pot life at 70 degrees Fahrenheit after mixing and it cures fully in 24 hours. It is also workable and curable below 28 degrees Fahrenheit which can come in handy if your workshop is in a freezer. Another brand of epoxy is a brand called West System. It comes in containers with convenient pumps to help you get the correct mix ratio of hardener to resin. Be sure and mix it thoroughly and I also add a filler to get the desired consistency that I need for the task at hand. A good place to use this glue is when gluing the fretboard to the neck. By doing this you are not introducing moisture into the neck and fretboard during the gluing process. Moisture can cause a back bow in the neck and fretboard. Apply glue to both pieces to be joined and then apply clamping pressure. Some builders even use epoxies as pore fillers, but that's a different subject for a different day. In this video I have discussed yellow glue, LMI instrument makers glue, plastic cement and vinyl adhesive, and epoxies. In part two of this tips du jour video about glues, I will address polyurethane glue, cyanoacrylate glue, also commonly known as superglue, as well as hide glue and fish glue.